I'm going to hit the record button and then I'm going to start to share. So welcome. Oh, sorry. Slideshow. That's what I mean. Slideshow. Can everybody see that now? Thumbs up. I think I need to, I think I want to um, plug into my additional screen and then I can mute, move all your fabulous pictures over here so I can see all your faces. That'll be great. Awesome. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad that you guys have joined us today. My name is Julie Butler and I am the DLI elementary specialist here in Canyon School District. So I'm excited to, oh, I'm gonna, hold on. I should have uh, made it so that we could, people could just come in instead of having to be admitted, but um, we're, welcome. We're so glad that you're joining us today. So like I said, I'm Julie Butler. I'm the DLI elementary specialist in Kenya's district. So if you have any questions about dual language immersion, you know that you can contact your um, coach, first of all, at your school. Your coach is great to answer all kinds of questions. Um, you can also contact your um, specialist at, at the um, state level. So it might take for our Spanish friends here and also um, Summer Wu for Chinese. And then I'm also your person to contact with regard to French dual immersion in in um, Canyons District. Irene and Georgia um, usually support um, with all things curriculum though for you. So today we're gonna talk about, um, well, let's go over norms first, sorry. We're gonna talk about Apple testing and getting ready for Apple testing. But today we wanna start out with just reviewing the norms. So we wanna be committed, we're gonna be focused um, today on improving student outcomes and um, committed to implementing the strategies that we're learning. Um, be responsible, so actively participate, ask questions. I'm here to answer your questions today. If I don't have answers for you, I will certainly um, get those answers and get back to you. Um, be respectful, allow others to speak and um, listen and use technology for the task at hand and then be safe, uh, take care of your needs. If you need to hop off this meeting, that's totally fine. Um, take care of what, what you need to take care of today. So one of the things I'm gonna ask you to do is just mute your microphone. Um, and then if you can turn your camera on, we'd sure like to see your face if you're comfortable with that. Um, that way we get to know you a little bit better and we'd sure appreciate that. Um, if you have a question or a comment, you can type it in the chat or you can use your little icons down at the bottom of your screen to raise your hand or you can just, if I can see your face, I see most of your faces right here right now and just some names. But if you turn your camera on and you like raise your hand and wave to me, then I'll stop and say, oh, what's your question with that? So, okay. Um, today we're gonna be, I'm talking about data for decision making in our framework. Apple testing happens once a year and only once a year. And then we use that information to help guide us with um, language proficiency goals and how we can help our students to improve and kind of make it to that next level. So we wanna make sure that we get accurate information for all of our students that are doing um, Apple testing. So today our learning intention is I'm learning how to prepare um, how to prepare for and administer Apple testing so that I'll know that my students' language proficiency level, I'll know what my students' language proficiency levels are, and I can help them to achieve the next proficiency level. Um, and we'll know that we're successful with this when um, you know when the testing window is, you can access the testing site, you make sure that the technology is working properly to be able to administer the test, you give a practice test with your students and that you can successfully administer the Apple test and then access the student scores once 
the test has been completed. Okay. Um, so today we're going to talk about those same things. We're going to talk about what is Apple testing to start, the window testing, rosters, tickets, account access technology, practice testing, um, administering tests, and then checking results, okay? So first of all, um, if you are new to the United States and um, Canyon School District, you might not know about Apple testing, and this is your first um, kind of hearing or information regarding Apple testing. Apple, A-A-P-P-L, stands for ACTFUL, where you can see over here, ACTFL is the American Council of the Teaching of Foreign Languages. Um, so it's the ACTFL assessment of performance toward proficiency in languages, okay? So it's a performance assessment of standards-based language learning across the different modes of communication. So it's gonna test listening, speaking, reading, and writing in various languages. And you do not take all of those tests in every grade. So we know that in third grade, you're gonna be doing speaking and listening, but you're not going to be doing writing. In fourth grade, I see Samuel there, fourth grade's gonna be doing, Samuel's gonna be doing writing with his class, right? And reading and writing. And then again, in fifth grade, we're gonna be doing speaking and listening as well. So um, this tells you exactly by grade level, which tests you will be administering in your grade level for Apple testing. Interpersonal listening and speaking, form A, and in fourth grade, listening and reading and presentational writing, both form A's. And then in fifth grade, interpersonal listening and speaking again, form A, okay? So everybody knows what they're doing in their grade level? Yeah? <laughs> Thumbs up if you know which test you're gonna be giving this this year, awesome, okay. All right, so here is some important information. The testing window in Canyon School District is October 24th through December 2nd. So you're gonna need to work with your school testing team to set that schedule. So usually your school testing team is your administrator, might be your instructional coach, might be a school secretary, might be your field tech on that team, and probably you as well when it comes to Apple testing. So you'll need to go ahead and set that window and be mindful of taking that test. One of the things that I wanna um, really reiterate to you and tell you how important this is, is that you need to test early. Please test early. Because if you have, if you're a speaking and listening person and the student has taken the test and it has not, uh, has not um, when they take the test, it's inaudible to them or the, the person who is grading the test cannot understand what is being said, they will rate that test as unreadable and the student will not get a score. So if a test back, comes back as unreadable, you can reset the test and have the student take it over, but it needs to be done early. It takes about a week turnaround to have that happen. So if after your whole class tests and you go in and look at your results and see that something is not readable, then you can request to have that test reset and the student can retake it before the end of the window. And that's one of the reasons why we say we are wanting you to test early. So please do not wait until that last week to test your students. It makes it hard to do makeups or it, to know if, um, if you have a student that, that doesn't that it's unreadable test. Then it, what happens is we have parents that come back to us when you have an unreadable test and there's no score for the student for a year and the parent is upset because this is a one and done. We are only allowed to test between October 24th and December 2nd. I hope that makes sense. Test early, <laughs> test early so that you can, um, retest any, reset and retest any of those scores that come back as unreadable, okay? 
All right. So this nice lady here that you see, oh, Andrew, go ahead. Do you have a question? Thanks. Yeah. So I had an issue with that last year because my partner teacher had the login for her homeroom class. And there was a student in her homeroom class who had an unreadable test. And I didn't find out about it until too late. So okay. I don't know if we're going to address today, but I just maybe on the horizon, if you could let me know how to access my partner teacher's account. My partner teacher is on maternity leave. So that's okay. just a question I have in general is uh, to avoid that pitfall again. Sure. Well, hopefully, so I'm, let me do a little explaining for you about how this works. Okay. All of the, the, this nice lady that you see on the screen here, her name is Cindy Perry, and she is in research and assessment. And she is the one that pulls off, that works with the state, with USBE, to, um, to order the tests and to have them all sent out to you via LTI, which is the system that we use to, for you to log in and see your rosters and see the scores and all of that. So Cindy Perry pulls that information and it's all done by the coding that has been done by your secretary in Skyward. So if it is not coded correctly in Skyward, Right now, if it is coded correctly, you should have access to both of your classes. When you log into LTI, you should be able to have access to both classes. If you don't, you need to contact Cindy Perry right away so that we can get a workaround for you, okay? So this is what, on this slide that you see, it says, Cindy Perry, here's her email, here's her phone number, and you're, you're gonna receive an email from her with your account access, which has your login and password information for LTI. Has anybody received that already? Maybe, okay. If you haven't, it's coming. Usually she will send me information um, when she's sending it out to all of you. So, um, and usually I'll, I'll let your coaches know, hey, they should have got their login information. Will you walk around and just check in with them to make sure that they have been able to log in and access and see if you have all of that. So when Cindy sends you that email, you need to log in. You should have access to both classes. You should have access to rosters. You should have access to all of your testing tickets. So it's going to be essential that you log into that early and you check everything to make sure it's okay that you have all your students there because if, if you don't, then we're gonna need to contact Cindy and she's gonna work with the state to get that information to you. Does that make sense? So she's your, she's your person, Cindy Perry, this nice lady here, she's very nice too. And when you reach out to her, she will answer you fast as a snap. She usually answers you within the hour or by the end of the day for sure. So she's great that way, okay? So um, be sure, to once you get that information, here's the LTI teacher access site. This is, you can log on to this now, but you're, you don't have your username or password um, yet. So, but you have access to this slide presentation in the Bite Size PD on Canyons U, and you have access to these links here as well. So this is what it looks like for you. That's what you will see when you go to log in. Okay, so you're going to be able to view, oops, sorry, I'm going to go back one. You're going to, just kidding. Um, you're, you're going to be able to view here your rosters. And once your students are tested, you'll be able to view their score reports in here as well. Okay, so it will have a score. And if it's unreadable, ask for a reset. Some of you might even have, um, uh, a score that you disagree with. And you can ask for um, a rescoring of that as well. So make sure you go in and you look at all of those. So, oops, so sorry. So one of the other things that we wanna talk about is technology and location. Where are you going to test? And this looks different across all of the schools in our district. Some. Some schools like to test in a computer lab. Some schools like to test using their Chromebooks in their classroom, right? 
So you need to ask and ask your teammates, your third, fourth, and fifth grade teachers, if you have veteran teachers there, or you can go to your coaches and, um, or your testing team and say, how do you typically test here? Because I want to make sure that I um, familiarize my students with this process here at our school. So make sure you reach out and find out where that's going to happen. It might be in your classroom. It might be in a computer lab, okay? Um, but one of the other things that you need to know is that you need to have um, a headset for every student. So if you're a fourth grader, you don't need a microphone. But if you are a third grader or a fifth grade um, teacher, you will need to have a headset that has a microphone on it for the students to be able to speak into the microphone to get a um, score for their language proficiency, their speaking test. So um, usually our schools have these available. If you don't have, if you don't find them in your school, um, reach out to your testing team to find out where those might be located. Um, these types of headsets typically are more expensive. And so sometimes they will pack them away and then bring them out when they're doing Apple testing or WIDA testing or specific tests that require um, a microphone and speaking, okay? But make sure that you have those things and that you're gonna wanna work with your field tag to make sure that, that the Apple testing site is not being blocked on your Chromebook. Okay, typically um, in the past, there are different ways that they push that out. Usually they have a bookmark that um, the students just go when they log in, they go right to a bookmark and it takes them right into the login page for the test. And then they just put their information in from their testing ticket and well, it will, the test will start for them. Okay. So once again, just be sure to make sure that your technology is working properly. And one of the ways that you can do that is by doing the demo with your class and doing a practice test. So um, this is an example of what it looks like. The practice test is the demo. There isn't an additional practice test in, um, in LTI that's specifically for this. So it's really important that you can access this website. All these links are live, so you can click here and it will take you right into the demo here. Um, hopefully you can see that on my screen. And I'll just walk you through one of these. It's really quite simple. You can see all the different languages that um, LTI provides um, assessment for. So I'm not gonna do Arabic. I'm, I'm afraid I would um, not do well with the Chinese, but I know I can get into French and I'm just gonna click on maybe the interpretive reading test, okay? because I know that that's one that I'm gonna do in fourth grade, let's say. It's gonna ask you to play this video Hi, up front. I'm Miss Patel, a language teacher with Actful. I know you've been working hard and it's time to put your language abilities to use. Before you start an Apple section, I have a few tips on how to move through it. When you finish with a task, click the next button to go to the next task. Each task requires a response before you can move to the next one. Do not use the browser's back button. Doing so will close the section. Do not click another browser tab. Doing so will also close the section. To stop and return to the test later, click on the sign out button. All the tasks you have completed will be automatically saved. Okay, and then you're just gonna go on to your next button and it will tell you, you've got four reading tasks to do. Once you go onto the next page, you know, once, once you go to the next page, you can't go back to the previous pages. So you're gonna really need to reiterate this to your students. Um, when you click next, you're gonna wanna test your sound. Hello, my name is Ava. What is your name? I'm not gonna need to respond, but I know that I can hear it. And um, as I've proctored this in the past, I've gone around to students and said, can you hear that? How's your sound? I wanna make sure that, because sometimes they need to listen to the instructions again. 
So, and then I'm going to go on to the next one. So before we begin, it tells you to shut down all of your other windows. You shouldn't have anything else running at the time. And if you have technical issues, um, everything should be saved when you log in again onto their account. So you'll notice. Welcome to the interpretive reading section. It's going to start the video you'll right away. Several passages on a variety of topics. You'll show your understanding by either matching what you read to a picture or by answering multiple choice questions. Before you get started, here are a few things to keep in mind. Look at the pictures and read the questions before reading the passage. Focus on the information you read in the passage. When you're finished with the task, use the next button to continue to the next task. That's it. Do your best and good luck. Okay, so as I go on to next, I'm gonna to wanna to walk through this whole thing with my students, right? So as I look for, um, I'm reading the sentence, I wanna match the picture with it. And you're gonna teach them how to use that haptic tool just to um, make sure that they can drag and drop and they know how to do this. So I'm just, putting pictures in here, I hope they match. And then I'm gonna go along to the next one. I'm reading here about desserts. And so I'm gonna just put that one in, but see down here, I, I don't wanna push this blue button at the bottom yet, cause I've gotta make it through all four of these tasks here first. Okay, so I moved that one in. Here I'm talking about fish. I'm gonna go on to my next question. Um, and this one's about red, I think, I hope, <laughs> and mineral water. And then now that I'm done with all four of those, then I can move on to the next one. Okay, so this is the demo and I could go all the way through all four of them. I wanna make sure that I walk my class through it and then I give them a chance to do this same activity. Make sure that you schedule time in to go through the demo and have your students practice doing this themselves on the device that they will be using the day that they take the test. Does that make sense? Okay. Any questions so far? Yeah, uh, I wanted to know, I wrote it on the chat. Um, maybe you said before, but uh, this uh, presentation, can we find in Canyons in the web or? Yes. It's under, it's under the Canyons U website, the Bite Size PD. So this presentation will be available once this, once this recording is, um, once I stop the recording, it sends me a link. I send it to our tech people and they will upload it in the Canvas, on the Canvas page for Canyons U. Perfect. And yeah. it will be available to you. Yes. So you Thank can you go back and look at it as many times as you want and click the links to access if you need to. Yeah, okay. thanks. Okay, so you can, this is where you access that demo. Oh, and I just opened it again. Of course I did. I've got lots of open windows now. All right, um, so make sure you, we, we already reviewed this practice test. Um, uh, here are all of the proctor guides for the different languages that we have here in Kenyans District. So there's one in English, one in French, one in Mandarin, and also one in Spanish. And this gives you the layout about everything that you need to do before you test and then during the test as well. So I recommend that you get onto this um, presentation and these are all live links. If I click right onto this, it will take me right into um, this pro this um proctoring guide for you in whichever language it is that you're going to be working on okay all right this is also the apple testing site login so this is located here as well and this is what it will look like for your students when they go to log in this page pops up they will enter the username and password that is on their testing ticket okay so make sure that you determine with your testing team how students are going to access the site. 
And you might want to just talk to your colleagues that have already done this because they, you, they probably have a great system already in place there at the school. Okay. Um, so once your kids have tested, you're going to go back to the same site where you check your rosters and it has all your information. This is where you can view if the score is unreadable. So make sure after you're done testing, about a week afterward, go back in and check in this site and look at your scores and see. Um, it's actually, it's probably about three days it will take for it all to be done. Um, this is also going to be the site where the score reports will be available for your parents. Um, and you will need to either, you will need to print those or your school administrator will need to print those um, score reports. And we ask that you share those score reports at parent-teacher conferences in the spring, okay? So you can access your student responses and listen to their speaking responses and their writing responses. Um, the interpretive reading and listening sections are gonna be computer scored and the interpersonal listening and speaking and presentational writing are rated by an Apple rater. So there's an actual person that actually goes in and scores that piece for you. So some of them take a little bit longer to score than others, okay? Um, you will be able to access all of them. If you don't agree with the score, asking for a rescore is free, doesn't cost any money. You just need to let Cindy Perry know that you're asking for the test to be rescored. So you'll need to send her an email. You'll need to include your name, the teacher name, the school where you work, the student's name, and their ID number. And so you, and then sh you'll send this email to customer care at languagetesting.com and you'll CC Cindy Perry on that. Okay. So you're gonna include the student's full name, the test type, the test language, and a test date, and a brief summary of why you're requesting a rescore of the test, okay? But that can take up to two weeks to do. If we need to reset it because it's unreadable, that's different than a rescore. Um, that can be done immediately. A, res uh, a rescoring of the test, they, they're gonna to have to get in and they're gonna to have to look at all of it and they're gonna have somebody else other than the original rater do an additional rating, okay? Oh, so score reports are gonna be available to print sometimes at the end of January, usually at the beginning of February, okay? You'll be able to share these with families at parent-teacher conferences in March. Parent-teacher conferences, I believe, are, are March 1st and 2nd, but um, you typically, you guys are doing parent-teacher conferences all week long, so that will usually start for you at the end of February because you have so many people to meet with. This is what the scores reports look like, and we're going to do another bite-sized PD in January that goes over specifically how to explain the score report to parents. So you don't need to worry about that right now. We'll come back and join you again in January to um, explain how the score report works, okay? All right, so that's all that I have to share today. I just wanted to go over, we all know when the testing window is now. You know how to access the testing site, I hope. Um, you're gonna make sure your technology is working properly. You're gonna give a demo test to your students, have them practice that before you test. And then you'll go ahead and administer the Apple test and access your scores. Do you have any questions right now that I can answer for you? I do have a question. Yes. Because this is uh, what happened last year, uh, like when the website start to freeze, should we have the student log out or refresh web page? Um, so if it's freezing like that, usually I try and switch out a device. I would have them, I would go get a different Chromebook or sit them at a different computer. Um, mm -hmm. Just because typically if you have 
if you have a, um, a computer that's freezing, it's usually a hardware issue. That's what I've personally found in the past. So sometimes switching out the device um, is the best course at that point. Okay, so if they switch to a different computer and then they don't have to log out the old one, right? They just go in. They, and they do need to log out of the old one. Otherwise, they won't be able to access their test again. Yeah, you'll okay, need to so log out. To log out mm -hmm. and get yeah. a computer. Yes. Gotcha. And then for the, sorry, I have so many questions. Oh, I think that's great. Yeah, so for the earphones, because I heard from uh, the teacher last year, because I wasn't here in this school district before. So there are a lot of earphones that cannot like recording. What yeah. should we do with that part? Because so, my voice is too low or it couldn't have any score in the end. They, they did all the best. They passed all, but then it just, there's no sound up being recorded. So, and, and that's something that you, that is important for you to notice when you're doing the practice test. The practice test will help you know there's there's going to be a little light bar when you go to the speaking test that it will say, you know, hey, test your sound on your computer and test your voice. It will ask a question and you'll have to respond. And there's like a little um, uh, light that lights up when the student is test is speaking and you'll be able to see it will go to green. If it's in green, you know that it's good. You can replay it to be able to hear before the student even starts testing that the microphone is actually working. If it's not, then switch it out, get a new um, device or get a new microphone headset to use with a student. That's one of the reasons why we really wanna make sure all of that is working before we actually take the test. Okay, yes. gotcha. So, and I just wanna let you know that um, the headsets have been provided by research and assessment to all of your schools at some point that are specifically designed to be able to support this kind of test. We use it for Apple testing. We also use it for WIDA testing. So um, if you don't have those in your room, go ask. You can ask the secretary, you can ask your coach, you can ask your principal, you can ask your field tech, and um, somebody will track that down for you. Okay. Thank you so Julie, much. Julie, are they the green and black ones? Yes, I are think that some of some have been green and black. I've seen orange and yellow as well. Okay. Around they're the but, same ones they use for WIDA, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And usually just page so you know, sometimes they really want to be protective of those because they want them to last as long as they can. So they'll use them for this test and then they'll take them back and you know put them away until they need them for another test like that again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Yes. Hi, Julie. I don't know if you said it before, but um, do we have access to both classes, to the results of both classes? So that really depends on if your classes were coded correctly in Skyward by the school secretary. Okay. So that is one of the reasons why I would really like you, as soon as you get that email from Cindy Perry, that you log into LTI and you check your rosters and make sure you have access to both of the classes. It, because if you don't, then we need to go ahead and send her that information back and we've got to get you access find a way for you to be able to access both classes so that you can look at the score reports, you know, in a reasonable amount of time. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So you should have them. If not, I'm in a perfect world. <laughs> I like to say that you should have both classes, but we know that isn't always the case. And sometimes we have to problem solve that. So get on early look and make sure that it's all there. Okay. And then we can problem solve if it's, if you don't have access to both of them. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yes, but you should. Okay, thank you. Any other questions that you have? Uh, me. <laughs> yes. I just logged into my account and I don't see any students' rosters yet. Is that yes. And, and because the data has not been pulled and imported okay. into the site yet. Gotcha. So, I was wondering, I was like, ooh. Yeah, so cool. you might have access to the site, but the test, the testing data has not been pulled over yet. You will be receiving, like I said, you'll probably within the next week information um, from Cindy Perry, you'll get an email. 
if not this next week, for sure the following week, okay? It's the same thing with Acadians data when they do, when our English side teachers do those benchmark testing three times a year, they'll be like, oh, this, you know, it's not in yet. Yes, it, be patient. We, we, on our end, we have to wait for the state to send us all of that information and then we upload it into our system here. Other questions? All right, well, I'm so glad that you joined me today. Thank you so much. I just wanna to get to this last slide. Um, this last slide has important links to remember. So you can go to Canyons U and you can get relicensure credit for attending today, which is, is really great for you. So if you would like to do that, you can go ahead and access the Canyons U um, page for Bite Size PD and you can rewatch this um, this Zoom meeting, and um, you can, you'll can you also have access just to the presentation. And if you have any questions at all, send me an email or you can call me anytime. Um, my information is right there and you can just even call our department here in ISD and they'll forward your uh, message to me, okay? Reach out with any questions that you have. All right, thanks for the thumbs up, Sean. I appreciate it. Good to see all of your faces. Nice to see you. And hopefully we'll be seeing you out in the school soon. Thank we'll you. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye.